chef Paul Lilikis is here serving up one of his grandmother's recipes. It's so good to see you. It's been forever. I know that you were so tight. You were so tight with your grandmother. And yeah. it's so nice that her legacy can live on through her recipes because yeah. that is what connects so many of us, isn't Absolutely. it? We have the cutest picture of you with your grandma. Yeah. There she is. <laughs> Adorable. I think she we taught were you how to cook. Easter eggs. Yeah. You're making Easter yeah. eggs. I think I my it. culinary journey began pretty much where that photo was taken. It yeah. was in her kitchen, and there's everyone's got that one recipe that sort of is timeless, and just you taste it and you go back there. Yeah. It takes me back like 25 years. I love it. Okay, what's the recipe? So the recipe is it's simple. It sounds simple. It's a chicken dumpling soup. Yeah. With dill. An herb that grew copiously in her garden, mm -hmm. and it just—it's aromatic. You can already smell it. I can smell it. Yeah. I can smell it in anything with a dumpling in it. I'm in. Right. Yes. yes. And it's not hard at all. Okay. It's a very—it's a very modest recipe she brought back with her from Estonia from yeah. a time when she didn't have a lot. Right. And so, uh, you know, she was talking about food waste before it was trendy. Yes. You know, yeah. it was all about making one chicken stretch out and filling in the gaps with dumplings and you know, a cute story about how they'll all turn out a little different. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, because they're all individual in their own way. That's right. But really, it was about survival. It was about scarcity. Yeah. And, um, and now we're sort of using these recipes because it's about flavor. Yeah. And we should all have that scarcity model all the time in our heads. I because, agree. you know, there is not, everything is not, it, it, everything is finite. Yeah. So you should be sort of thinking about things in a, in, a, in a more reasonable manner. Yeah, and this is an awesome recipe for sharing. Oh, so that's I nice. think food is for sharing. It is for sharing. And it all starts with. A basic chicken broth. Okay, so share with us so how you make this broth. What my grandmother would do, she would just take one chicken yep. and she would put it in about six liters of water, 24 yep. cups, and just simmer it. Okay. That's it. That's it. Until the chicken starts to fall apart. Yeah. Then she would remove the chicken. Okay. And this is what you have. You have a basic, basic chicken broth. Okay, so that's how she did it. That was it. Okay. And then, then, you let the chicken cool, mm -hmm. you pull it apart. I've already done this, yeah. and I've chopped it up. And then you add all the other flavorings. And Got this it. is the base for a soup. So you could stop here, you could season it. Some people drink chicken broth, yeah. you know, as a cold weather sort of remedy. Totally. But this is what she would do. She would add in her vegetables. So in goes some diced carrots. Yeah. Some, I'll give that to you. Celery. Some diced celery. Mm -hmm. Some potato. Oh, These you are know all... how to do it without splashing. You must be a chef. <laughs> you got to get close to the water. Oh, that's what you do. A lot of onion. So many onions. Yep. This that is the thing that's going to keep you from getting the cold and flu, my friend. That's right. Like, or so if good you for already you. have a cold and flu, this is going to help it's it like move magic. through. Yeah. Lots of dill. Lots of dill. You doing the whole thing of dill? The whole thing. Let's do it. All of it. You wild man. <laughs> well, this do is it. the thing that when I give this soup to people, they 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 don't expect it. They're like, what is that? What? They never cook with dill. That's right. I'm trying to educate people. Yeah, very good. Garlic. Okay. And this is beautiful. This is a you know some people might consider this to be the weird one, uh, since we went through the trouble of making stock from scratch. I'm adding a little bit of chicken soup base. My grandmother would always add it. Okay. And she said it was for flavor. But yes. we know now it's for umami. Oh, it's for, for umami. it's for glutamic acid. Got so the it. fact that you simmered the chicken, it gives you a gorgeous. Uh, what do you sorry, need? I need this ladle. Okay. It gives you a gorgeous mouthfeel, a rich broth, but a little bit of that soup base gives you umami, so right. glutamic acid, and then lots of sea salt. See, most of our grandmothers have been following the uh, rules of all the top chefs without even knowing that they were the rules of the top chefs because they've always known. Yep. What did you just put in there that everyone just freaked out about? Sea salt. <laughs> it looks like a lot of did salt. Did it look like a lot of salt? It is a lot of salt, but that's a lot of broth. That's a lot of yeah. plain water, so yes. you need to season it. Yeah, we're, me, we're afraid me. of salt because we've been told don't have salt, but that issue is about is about packaged goods. Yeah. So that's about the sodium you're seeing in packaged goods. Right. You were the making that sodium. from scratch. Exactly. You can so control you the sodium. So you have to add some salt. Right. Yeah. If you're on a low sodium diet, you can adjust it any way you like. Hundred percent. When I make it, I add that much salt. Okay. So <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> so after you simmer those vegetables for a little while, yeah. Now comes time for the dumplings. Yeah. And my grandma always said, "This is a super simple dumpling batter. It's eggs." Flour, butter, yeah, salt, and milk. Okay, and she it's on our website, cityline.tv. Exactly. She would say, make it the night before. Mm -hmm. Then it gives it uh, that flour some time to hydrate, yeah. and you can tell in the morning when you touch it, it, it's got that stretch, that gluten. Good. And it'll make a nice chewy dumpling. So now there are two ways to make them. My grandma yeah. would take two spoons mm -hmm. and heat them so that it doesn't stick. Okay. And then take maybe a tablespoon or two and just loop. Yeah. 
Yep, right into there. So and, it gonna, and it gonna, disappears. And it disappears. But when they're done, they float to the top. Oh, that's so cool. And, and you would make these with your grandma. Yeah, I would that's be so, so short. I'd have to have a footstool, and literally my nose would be here, and I'd just be like peering in as she would be dropping them in, talking about how they're all going to turn out a little different. Yeah. It's like one of those warm, warm memories that I have. That's beautiful. And another trick, yeah. she didn't use this, but if you got one of these. Yeah, use the ice cream scoop. It's actually so easy. Okay, so, but make sure you warm it up You warm first. it first so they don't stick. Yeah. And then you do a little and then plop it in. There you go. Why don't you make one? How long does it usually take before they, before they float? float to the top? Uh, you know what? It depends. It depends how big they are. Not yeah. too long. A few minutes. Okay. And then right. you just want to let them cook for a little while. So to make sure that the centers are completely cooked. Yeah. Yeah. And when they're done. When they're finished. They look like this. Ooh, they look amazing. And they have so bring that ladle over. And they're all, I mean, listen, they're all they're all being handmade. Yep. So like grandma said, they're They've all a little touch. different. And I really, really want you to try this because you know it's one of those things looking at it, yeah. you really can't tell. It's way more than just the sum of its parts. They want to try it too, don't you? Right. I do not have enough spoons. <laughs> Isn't it something? It's really good. There's so much flavor in that. Yeah. So like you say, doesn't look like much. It's incredible. It and, tastes so good. And it's for sharing, whether your neighbor's got a hangover or they're sick. So <laughs> I always make a big, big pot of it. Yeah. And you see this big pot, sometimes people don't have a big pot like that. Yeah. You can cut the recipe in half. Totally. Just do it with one chicken. So this is for you. Take oh, home for your family. Oh, thank you. <laughs>